Hi, I'm Ellie James Gray, and I'm doing a personal challenge of 101 projects in 101 days. And today is the first day, and the plan is to do blackout poetry. This is my cat, Mufasa. We just call him Meow Meow. He wants attention. So blackout poetry is when you take a page in a book, and you black out anything on the page that you don't want in your poem. Some people use it for different forms of art. I've seen lots of wonderful sketches in it. Um, you don't actually have to mark in a book. You can photocopy it. I had this example where I used post-it notes because I didn't have anything else. I used post-it notes to block out the words that I didn't want in the poem and to leave words to form the poem. Um, you can photocopy. You can take a picture and do it on your phone. In an editing app, you can find a picture of a page online and do it on a Photoshop program. Um, today I am going to be marking in a book because it's my published book. It's okay, the author won't mind. And the reason why I'm wanting to do it to my own published book is I'm curious if the language that I use in narration and in <laughs> The language that I use in narration and in writing a book, if it lends itself to poetry. So, I picked a page, it's that one, and I am going to mark in it, it's okay. I'm not going to hurt the author's feelings. And I'm going to just skim through it and pick out words that have imagery for me or evoke an emotion or just are interesting in some way to me. Okay, so I just underlined in pencil some different words that stuck out to me. There's a lot of talk about color on this page, a lot of yellow, um, too many bright. <laughs> Looking back at this, I should have not said bright so many times. But it'll actually work in a poem because I like repetitive things, kind of keeping the a thread throughout the poem and bright really works for that. So now I have underlined what I what words I like and so I'm going to go through and try to connect it and pull in ands, ofs, does, that sort of thing to make it flow a little bit more. Okay. That's where I'm at. I started with underlining the words that stuck out to me and then I went through and kind of connected things and boxed out what the poem could actually be. I feel like I'm missing a last line in it but there's something. It's a poem. It's fine. I'm not a poet. But I'm doing a poem and that's okay. I don't know how to read poems either. So is, I, I know, everyone hate me for what I'm doing to this poor book. So I'll, how about I just read the poem to, to give you a little bit of context. We have the main character eating spaghetti with her mom and brother. The mom is passive aggressive and the brother is sad. And then they all leave. <laughs> Really interesting scene, I promise. Back, back and forth. Disrespectful to bright. Brighter than that one. Brighter than I. Neon yellow. Without looking back, your fault. Ouch. Faked brightness, honey. Untouched love. Colors all around. Green, black, red. Collage of colors. Those bright colors. And I feel like I'm missing, there's a, like, the, the, I feel like the end is missing a line. But that is, that is, that is the bottom. There are no more words. But that's, that's my poem. Um, and the blacking out of the poem is for the reader's benefit, so that they can actually understand what words are supposed to be in the poem. 
There are so many examples of sketches being used around the words to reflect the symbolism that comes out in the poem. So I will do something <laughs> and show you afterwards. Hey. What are you doing? Okay. Wanna say hi? <laughs> hi. <laughs> So this is what I have ended up with, the the background, the honeycomb isn't necessary, I can do this and take it off, but I feel like it adds some, it adds something to the poem, um, especially since I changed the ending of the poem. And it is hanging, turning the colors all left, and having it, the colors fade out of the background adds a bit, as well as what I cut out in black. I keep the black continuing. Also, I have it up here to show that it's all one phrase. Um, it might not look as much like a blackout poem with the images, but I like it. And I'm not doing anything else with it, so it's fine. But yeah, this is my end result. I can read it again since I changed the ending. Back, back and forth, disrespectful to bright, brighter than that one, brighter than I, neon yellow. Without looking back, your fault, ouch. Faked brightness, honey, untouched love, hanging, turning, the colors all left. If you recognize this, it might help explain why I decided to create things one a day for an extended period of time. I'm new to recording and doing things. Anyway, so that was my blackout poem for today. Um, that was my project for today. And I'm planning on doing a three star rating system on each of my projects just for my own information. One star is I did it. <laughs> done. That's, that's, that's the goal of doing things, is to do them. Uh, the second star, if it gets two stars, that means I enjoyed doing it. Um, and three stars means that it turned out well. And that's kind of just a bonus. Uh, it, I, whether it turns out well, or if it turns out terribly, doesn't matter. I'm just doing things. If it turns out well, but I didn't enjoy it, it still only gets one star, because why would I do things that I don't enjoy? So yeah, let me know if you've done Blackout Poetry before, if you want to try it. If you want to stay up to date on my projects, I'm probably not going to make a YouTube video every single time, but I am planning on uh, posting it on my Instagram, and doing TikToks more often than YouTube, at least. <laughs> so jump in. If you want to do blackout poetry, do blackout poetry. If you want ideas of quick, simple projects that you can do, follow me and I will be posting daily random, short, quick projects that you can do with minimal supplies most of the time. So thanks for watching. Try it out yourself. Tell me how it goes. <laughs> and I'll see you next time. Bye.